In this video, we're going to be going over the trigonometry ratio of sine theta. So we're first going to be going over what sine theta is just to refresh our minds. So second, we're going to be going over some simple tricks to generate a sine theta table. And for number three, we're going to be visualizing how the sine theta table actually looks like. And then fourth, we're going to be showing proof of the trigonometry ratio of sine theta. And finally, for number five, we're going to be creating a trigonometry ratio table with programming. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's get started. So to refresh our minds, let's just go over what sine theta is. So if you didn't know already, sine theta is basically p by h, which is perpendicular over hypotenuse. So sine theta is basically the projection from the hypotenuse onto the actual perpendicular or the opposite side. So now let's move on to the trigonometry ratio table of sine theta. We will first calculate the value of sine theta, where theta will be 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And at the end, we're going to be deriving these values on a table with coding, and we will also visualize how these look like. So right now, I'm just going to explain what the table actually says, and later on, we're going to be visualizing how the values actually look like. So sine 0 is 0. Sine 45 is 1 over square root of 2. Sine 60 is square root 3 over 2. And sine 90 is 1. So basically, these are the values that we have in the sine trigonometry table. So now let's go over some simple tricks of how to create the trigonometry table of sine theta very easily. So we're first going to make a table and I'll show one on the screen of how it looks like. So for each of the values 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, we're just going to write 0 to 4. So for 0 it would be 0, for 30 it would be 1, for 45 it would be 2, and so on all, all the way into 90 which will be 4. And then next we're going to write divide by 4 underneath. So in each box, we're going to be dividing them by 4. So zero, for 0, it would be 0 divided by 4. For 30 degrees, it would be 1 divided by 4, and so on. And then after that, we're going to be square rooting all these values. So for sine 0, if we square root 0 over 4, then we still get 0. For sine 30, if we square root 1 over 4, we get 1 half, or 1 over 2. So for sine 45, if we square root 2 over 4, then in conclusion, we get 1 over square root of 2. Then for sine 60, if we square root 3 over 4, then we get square root of 3 divided by 2. So for sine 90, if we square root 4 over 4, we obviously get 1. So this is a very simple way of getting our trigonometry ratio for sine theta. So now let's get on with visualizing sine theta. So as we said before, sine theta is basically the projection of the hypotenuse onto the perpendicular side. So when theta is equal to 0, projection on the vertical face is also 0 as shown in the figure A. So if you look in figure A, you can see that the light bulb is shining and the light goes right directly and it shows as a dot. So sine 0 is equal to 0. So if we look at sine 30, so we already know that sine 30 is half from our table. So if we look at it, the light shines and then it looks exactly half. So the light that comes on like the mirror surface, we can see that it is half. So if we take our line and make a 45 degree angle, we can see that it looks more than half. And from our table, we know that it's approximately 0.71%. So now for sine 60. So if you take the line and make a 60 degree angle, we can see that the shadow of the line looks really tall. And from our table, we know that it's approximately 0.87%. And for sine 90, we can see that the line is completely vertical. So we know that sine 90 is 1. So this is basically a short method to help you to visualize how sine theta looks like. Now we'll be showing proof of how sine theta actually looks like. For this example, we'll take sine 30. So we already know that sine 30 is equal to 1 by 2. But how do we get this value? So we're first going to draw a unit radius circle. Next, we're going to be drawing four quadrants inside of the circle. After that, we're going to draw a line with a 30 degrees angle. Following the 30 degrees angle, we'll draw another line that is straight down to make a triangle. And we're going to name these sides A, B, and C. So now let's say that we're given the radius of the circle. And the radius that we have is 1. So basically, we can say that side AB is equal to 1. Since our radius is 1, we know that side AB will also be 1. And this is because you're just basically moving the radius upwards. So now since we have our first triangle, we're basically just going to duplicate it to make another triangle on the bottom. 
and this will create an equilateral triangle. So as shown in the image, all the lengths are now the same. So all we need to do now is find the value of sine theta. So we already know that sine theta is perpendicular over hypotenuse. So our equation will look something like this. Sine 30 is equal to p by h. And we already know that h is equal to 1. So if we substitute our values, we basically have sine 30 equals to p divided by 1. And since we know that anything divided by 1 is always the same number, so we can just leave it as p. So now our equation looks like this. Sine 30 is equal to p. So basically now all we have to do to find the value of sine 30 is find the length of b. So how are we going to do this? So from the equilateral triangle, we already know that side ab is equal to bd. And this is because all of the lengths are the same in the equilateral triangle. And since ab is equal to bd, so then we know that side bd is 1. So now let's substitute our values. So now we have p is equal to 1 over 2. So then we get sine 30 is equal to 1 over 2. So this is basically how you can find the values of sine. And in the same way, you can also derive the values for sine 45, sine 60, and for sine 0 and sine 90, it's already obvious. So now we're going to be creating our trigonometry table of sine theta using programming. So this is basically in reference how our website will look like. So it's just going to be this nice little table here with all the degrees of sine that we learned about in this video. And we're just going to be showing what each of the values is. So sine 0 is 0, sine 90 is 1, and sine 30 is 1 half, and so on. And since we already derived the values, we already know what each of them are. So this is basically what we're going to be making. And the languages that we're going to be using to make this is going to be PHP, HTML, and CSS. So we're going to be using PHP to create these t this table here, and we're also going to be using PHP to jump from page to page. So when we first open up our website, it's going to look like this, and it's just going to be this button that says the Show Trigonometry Table, and once you click it, then it's going to come over to this uh, to this page, and in this page, it's going to be the show the actual trigonometry table itself. So that's basically what we're, uh, PHP is going to help us to do. It's going to help us to jump from page to page and create this table here. And what HTML and CSS is going to do is that it's going to help us to actually create this button here. And it's going to help the website to look actually nice. So here you can see the different types of colors and the text font and everything. So HTML and CSS is going to help us with that. And PHP is going to help us with jumping from page to page and with this table. So that's basically the explanation of what we're going to do today. And now let's get started with the code. So I already have all the code over here, and I'll also link the code in the description below if you want to download it. But anyways, uh, we're basically going to create two different folders. One is for CSS and one is for PHP. And for CSS, we're just going to name one for header.css and triratio.css, and then one for triratio.php. And in the PHP, this is where we're actually going to make the website itself with the buttons and the table. And here, we're just going to style everything and make it look nice. So let's start off with our actual PHP code. So in here, I've put both of our HTML and our PHP code in the same file. So it'll be easier for us to reference it to, and we don't have to like switch before like pages and pages. So let's first check out this HTML code here. Right over here, just uh, here, we're just going to be like inserting the HTML, and we're just making the HTML tag, and then we're making the head. So this is basically like the main part of it, and we're making the title of our website the trigonometry ratio and here we're just linking our css pages which are these pages here and then down here we're creating our header which is the h1 for saying trigonometry ratio if we remember oh, let me just open it up so this is the h1 here and if we go back to our code so this is basically our body but since we don't have anything we're just going to be leaving our body like that and we're just going to leave the style color as orange and now if we move down here, this is where like our actual table comes in and our button. So we're first going to open up our PHP tag. And we're going to first create a variable called display form is equal to true. So essentially what we're doing here first is if I go back to our website here, we can first, so we're able to see our actual button here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a form that says it's true at first because we want to be able to see our button. But once we click our button, we're going to be want to, able to hide it because we don't want to see the button again. So we're basically what we're doing here is we're creating this form as true for the button to be true. And then once it is equal to post, 
So once it's moving from page to page, then the display form is going to be false so nobody can see it. So what we're doing here first, once again, we're just going to be setting it to true. And then if the server request method is equal to post, then it's going to be equal to uh, false and we're going to be plotting our actual table. And over here, this is where our button actually is. So this is the button for showing our trigonometry table. And then we're going to be opening up another PHP tag. And then here we're saying if the server request method is equal to post, then we're going to plot the table. So we're going to create a new function called plot table. And here, this is where the table actually is. So we're actually going to be making the table with HTML. But the problem is that we cannot like use HTML inside of a PHP tag. So what we have to do is we have to echo it. And if we echo it, then we can use HTML inside of uh, PHP. So we're first going to echo out and then we're going to create a table. You can just copy this off right here. So over here, this is basically the top of our table. So the 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 and 90 degrees. So if we go back to our website quickly, so this is basically that. And then if we go back to our code, here we have our actual sign values and we're just inputting the values ourselves. And then we're just closing off our table and our, we're just echoing out the table and closing everything off. So this is basically our PHP code here. And now if we go over to our header.css, this is just basically giving our CSS header some colors and some nice attributes so it looks nice. So you can just copy this off as well. And for our try ratio CSS, here we're just uh, redoing some of these things to make our website look better. So once again, you can just copy these off and they will be in the description below so you can check them off over there as well. So now let's just quickly run to see how our website works. So if we go over to our uh, first page where the button is and let's just press the show trigonometry table. So once we showed it, then we got our table popping up and here we have our sign values. So for zero, what is what is sign zero? We get zero. What is sign 30? We get one half. What is sign 45? We get one over square root of two. What is sign 60? We get square root three over two. And what is sign 90? We get one. So this is basically it for our code. And that also concludes our video for today. So thank you so much for watching this trigonometry ratio video about sine theta. And we will also be making some other videos on the trigonometry ratio of cos and tan. So stay tuned for that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.